Welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It is February the 16th of 2022 and markets were a little up and down today. So we're Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So let's take a look at what's going on. Everybody was in anticipation of what the Fed was going to do. And once again, the Fed does not disappoint. And they came out basically with the minutes from the January meeting. So just so everybody's clear, the minutes that came out today that the market was waiting on and that the market was down on overnight and earlier today, the market was down close to 1% on the Dow. S&P and NASDAQ finished kind of flat today overall, Dow down just a little bit, S&P up just a little bit, NASDAQ kind of flat down just a hair. Um, markets were down, then they rebounded into the close today because they were expecting, I don't know what they were expecting from the January meeting. And again, it's like I always say, it's not what they say, it's what they do. So the Fed will come out and they'll have all kinds of talk and members will come out privately. You had Bullard the other day that came out and said, we need to just uh, raise rates half a point. We need to reduce the balance sheet. We need to do everything we need to do because we've lost credibility. Then you have Neil Kashkari who comes out and says, well, we don't really need to do but so much so fast. And we need to take it a little bit slow because we don't want to upset uh, the economy and we don't want to create a recession. So they're talking out of both sides of their mouths. And again, it's not what they say, it's what they do is the key to pay attention to. So at the end of the day, what the Fed basically said was they outlined the plans for interest rate hikes, but they did not say how much they would hike. So there's still the question, is it going to be a quarter of a point or half a point? And until we get there, we don't know what they said in the emergency meeting and what kind of action they want to take. Uh, they're also talking about um, reduction of the balance sheet and how they're going to do that. So obviously the Fed does not want to create a market crash and an economic meltdown. So they're walking on thin ice in terms of how they do this. Recession is something that's probably on the horizon anyways with inflation out of control like it is and not wanting to show any signs of backing off. Uh, today, home builder confidence, um, was down on rising construction costs and inability to get items, creating delays in schedules, which add to cost. So there's still a lot of concern there, but that creates opportunity in the real estate market. If you're looking to buy a house with interest rates rising, that's going to affect prices. That's going to affect demand. Mortgage demand is already down because rates are rising as costs rise and as builders are uh, caught in this little trap. If they lose buyers, they lose demand at the back end of a big production run. They might be sitting on inventory and big builders can cut inventory at really good prices. So if you're in the market for a house, you might want to wait here a little bit and see how things shake out. You might be able to pick up a deal if builders end up with too much inventory and not enough buyers. That's not a problem yet anywhere. A uh, very unique time in the real estate market with record demand we've never seen before. Last time in 2008 and 9, it was the other way around. There was too much inventory, not enough demand, uh, which created the housing crisis. So that's kind of where we sit today. And of course, the other news, uh, still waiting on what's going to happen between Russia and Ukraine. And if Russia is actually going to invade yesterday, the reports were that Russia was pulling troops out of the area today. Reports are that they're actually building troops in the area. So this is all over the place. This isn't just um, mainstream media. Uh, news outlets overseas are kind of saying the same thing in terms of what uh, troop buildup looks like, whether they're pulling in, pulling out. Um, this is Reuters, and uh, they're saying, NATO is saying that Russia is still building, uh, building up troops near Ukraine. So we, we're not going to know until we know. Uh, right now, we know that they still have a lot of troops there. They still have the borders uh, stacked and surrounded and are still in a position to make a move. So hopefully, again, this is all just political posturing and uh, nothing real is going to happen. But until troops are pulled out of the area and uh, Russia you know, completely backs down, we're not going to see resolution to this, or if Ukraine backs down, which, you know, Russia obviously does not want them as part of NATO, um, then 
We're going to still continue to wonder what's going to happen. And if Russia does invade, markets are going to take a hit until we see what the results of that invasion are, what that looks like and how it escalates. So that's just something that we have to watch and kind of keep an eye on. So let's take a look at cryptocurrency markets here. That's the economic news of the day, the geopolitical news of the day. There's really nothing else substantial out there in terms of markets or earnings or anything significant to look at. We do know inflation is a big problem. Uh, we do know that... Um, you know, economic uncertainty is still an issue. And the cryptocurrency markets and Bitcoin kind of fell down with the stock markets today in anticipation of the Fed minutes. The minutes came out, markets rose, Bitcoin rose, cryptocurrencies rose uh, along with stock markets. So we're still in this ranging area where Bitcoin is trying to figure out what its next move is gonna be. That was on the hourly. If we look at it on the daily, uh, we had our low, uh, of, of the region here at 35,000, this range low right here, local range low. We had a higher low. Uh, Bitcoin put in a higher low at 36.9. So that's our higher low. We had a lower high. Uh, and now Bitcoin is working on another potential lower high, depending on how we close out the day to day. It's pretty much right in line with um, this, this previous lower high over here of 44 thousand forty four five somewhere in that range is kind of where we're at today so it depends on where we close out uh, where bitcoin closes the day today if we get a another lower high and just kind of continue the march upward into that retracement like we've talked about looking at the different fractals and where the market stands right now this was a nice little bounce if you go from the wick low to wick high of this bounce here that's 38 percent and what do you have to compare it really the only thing we have to look at is if you go back to 2018. Let's take it off log here. Go back to 2018 and uh, see how that shaped out uh, off the initial drop here from wick low to wick high. That was a 52% bounce. Then it dropped again. There was a wick low to a wick high of a 40% bounce. And that kind of continued on along the way as it worked its way down. Uh, several 40% bounces as Bitcoin worked its way down into a longer term bear market. So we could very well be looking at something like this. And this was the situation that we talked about last couple of videos in October, November of 2018, where all of the talk was uh, Fed raising interest rates. And it happened December of 2018, they raised rates a half a point. And that was the bottom of this area here for Bitcoin before it bounced, kind of ranged a little bit more and then uh, continued into a little bit of a bounce working its way back into more of a bullish cycle, although there was still a lot of up and down. Of course, that's the March 2020. And again, my, my thesis in my mind was uh, this January, February of 2020 was where Bitcoin was moving into a new bullish phase before the March 2020 event. And uh, of course, we know what happened after that with the Fed pumping all of the money back into the economy. Let's take a look at a couple of things here. One, obviously, everything that you look at from a technical analysis standpoint, and I do watch um, the technical analysis of others. And I look at you know, all the different indicators they're using with MACD, RSI, things like that. And you know, those are all great. We looked at the MACD yesterday. So let's look at the RSI. Um, and kind of see what that's doing uh, in terms of, where did that go here? Hang on one second, that didn't come through. Um, if you look at the RSI, these are all, you know, again, lagging indicators. So they're taking uh, averages across, let's look at, um, this thing's putting in the wrong thing here, RSI. Uh, as I said, I am not a chartist and uh, technical analyst. I do the best I can do just kind of using charts to kind of get an idea of where uh, markets are going and what they're doing. And what I do is I, I basically look at the techni technical analysis of others in the market and you know, using the indicators. There's just so many different indicators that you can use, um, like the MACD, RSI, things like that. And at the end of the day, um, they're, they're averages, right? So they're taking previous price action and showing you where 
uh, you know, what it looks like on the charts with the MACD moving average convergence, divergence, and it just basically follows price action. So what you can do is you can say, okay, where did this, we're on the daily here at Bitcoin, where did we get a similar condition in the past where, um, you know, the moving averages were underneath the range here and then broke above? Well, it was a little bit right here into this move, more so, uh, more comparative back in the summer of 2020, June, uh, July, August of 2021 low in that March, uh, April, May timeframe. So the lines were below here and starting to come up in this area here. You know, that looks a little bit like what we're dealing with here. And we've talked about this fractal that we're tracking on the daily right there. The MACD over here kind of looks the same in this area, but you know, again, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot because it's just kind of following price action. So at the end of the day, it's all about price action. It's all about ranges. I try to keep it as simple as possible in terms of, you know, where are you on the, you know, uh, moving averages in the 50, 100, 200 day moving average. And of course, you want to be above the 200 day moving average. That's the big one. That's a big technical breakdown when you go below the 200 day moving average. Um, 100 day and 50 day obviously are a little bit closer because it's tracking previous price, that price action. So you want to reclaim the moving averages to really gain confidence in the market. And then we've looked at on the weekly with, um, the Gaussian channel, and we've looked back at history, and let's look at this on log scale, where the midline of the Gaussian channel, uh, Bitcoin broke below it, rejected, now it's it's above it. So the question is, on the weekly, is it going to continue above it? And we can go back and look at previous price history where Bitcoin has fallen into the Gaussian channel, stayed below that midline, gets above it, and generally it takes a few weeks for it to get out of the Gaussian channel once it breaks back above it, generally 13, 12, 13 weeks. Uh, same thing over here. It didn't take that long once it broke above the midline, but it did fall back in there again. And then of course you had the March 2020 event that was coming off of uh, 2017, 2018 right here. And then you can go back further uh, on the Gaussian channel. And it's generally several weeks that once Bitcoin is below that midline of the Gaussian channel, it kind of stays in there uh, and then after 2017, 2018, we're kind of looking at this uh, range right here with retracement that we're looking at now where, where Bitcoin broke above the Gaussian channel, went back below it. And that was a longer period that we talked about where it stayed below uh, the Gaussian channel before it continued to the bull run for a long time, 777 days. So that was a good long period of time, basically from the time it entered the Gaussian channel on May of 2018 until it came out of the Gaussian channel, September of 2020. So that was a good long period of time that Bitcoin stayed in there, but a lot of movement, a lot of price action, a lot of trading opportunities in there. No fun if you were buying, holding, and just kind of waiting it out. So different kind of strategy there. So like I said, I do watch technical analysis of others that, you know, with all kinds of different indicators and things like that. But at the end of the day, they don't really tell you anything. They don't tell you where price is going. Um, even uh, relative strength, uh, even indicators that show you overbought, underbought. Obviously, when Bitcoin's at the highs, it's overbought. When it's at the lows, it's, um, you know, underbought or oversold, you know, undersold, you know, underbought, overbought, undersold, oversold. You know, those conditions, you can be oversold for a long time at the bottom and still continue down. You can be overbought at the top and still continue up. So even those don't give you a whole lot of future indications of what price is going to do. You can look at on-chain analytics. On-chain analytics are always bullish, but they're lagging a week or two and they're easily manipulated. The whales and large investors can move coins in and out of exchanges and do things to make uh, and telegraph moves to make you think they're going to do certain things. And then there's a lot of stuff that just takes place off-chain as well and over the counter. So it's not even tracked through exchanges and things like that. So at the end of the day, it boils down to price action which is going to boil down to support and resistance. And that's what you want to do is you want to get to know where are your major areas of support? Where's your macro structure? What are your trends? And that's at the end of the day, what really matters. And when you look at trend lines, uh, there's the major trend line here in the downtrend that uh, everybody's been tracking, rightfully so, because that that's the trend that matters right now is this downtrend right here where price finally broke above that. And then the question is, does it come back and retest it? And is there a new trend that has been created through this zone here? And 
price that price is respecting. So there's all kinds of different trends that you can take a look at. Now you have a trend coming up right here that price has been respecting going up. So is it going to come back and test? So you can start drawing trend lines all over the map, right? So you got this trend right here um, that has been now created from this low to this wick low that price rejected off of coming right here. So we can just create all kinds of spider lines and all kinds of charts uh, and all kinds of trends. But what you look for is confluence. There seems to be a lot of confluence in this range right here in that $44,000 range. A lot of the trend lines are coming together right there and creating a resistance in, in this area of that 44,000 to 45,000 range. So ultimately what you want is Bitcoin to come up and flip that into support. So right now this resistance cap, once that gets flipped into support, Bitcoin breaks above like we we're talking about here and then comes back and tests. And then if it bounces, then you could potentially have continuation on and upwards from that level at 52 and just like or 50,000, just like if it breaks back down, it could come in and test in this area right here and then continue onward and upward. And this is that uh, 37, 38, that's that $38,000 range that was resistance that now could be flipped into support. So those are the things that you want to look for in the chart. Uh, a lot of, like I said, a lot of the indicators are just lagging indicators that are measuring average price action, relative strength, MACD, it doesn't matter what it is. It's tracking price action, basically volume, um, can show you a good indication of where things are going. But again, price moves on low volume because it's such a uh, small asset in terms of market cap. It's a trillion dollar market cap, not very many coins in, in uh, circulation. So it's, you know, it's a liquid asset, but not super, super liquid. So it doesn't take a lot of capital to move it. And large investors know how to move price uh, up and down so that they can uh, get better entries and exits and maximize their opportunities. So at the end of the day, you want to look at price action. Right now, we have major market structure uh, at that $34,000, $35,000 range. That's your, that's your major market structure support right now. Uh, well, actually, where we're at right now is actually $41,000. So we, you know, at some point, Bitcoin will probably retest that $40,000, $41,000 range. Below that, you have that $35,000. Below that, your last leg of support is in that $29,000 range. And if Bitcoin were to come down, uh, like we've talked about with a retrace, and test that range, then your next support to be tested is gonna be the previous high at 19,000. And that's a big one because uh, unless there's a serious economic event, geopolitical event, some sort of panic in the market, that likely should hold. And that's the last test because that previous high should not be broken based on past history. And of course, we only have three previous highs of past history to look back on. And we know what happened in the pandemic. Uh, it broke down um, pretty low, uh, but I don't know if it broke the previous, you know, I guess it didn't break the previous all-time high before that, which, you know, again, different asset, different time. So right now, this 19,000 is the last level of support that Bitcoin would look to break in the worst case scenario, uh, but it's got to get through these levels first. And right now, what it has in front of it to flip, that it's flipped into support is that 42,000. Um, so what we're looking for for Bitcoin to do is flip 44 into support, and then it can continue its march onward and upward setting um, higher lows and higher highs in this trend until we see confirmation kind of like we did over here, whether it's going to roll over or continue up or possibly even repeat. Let's take a look at that, uh, potentially repeat this entire fractal that we've been looking at over here. If we kind of copy this and just take it to there, pull that over that we looked at the other day and see if that's something that could potentially uh, ultimately play out over here. And we had this kind of copied in right here in this area there. So uh, are we gonna see something like this? And that kind of falls in line with what we're talking about where Bitcoin would retest that 40,000 confirm that as support, move over, roll back down, retest again at this 45, flip that into support, and then it's either going to continue on or break through right there. And unfortunately, you don't know till you get there. 
And uh, if that were the case and it followed that same pattern, where would that put a high coming in? And I think we talked about this before, if it repeated this pattern, it would put the high in at that 72,000 range, somewhere around there for the next high. And what would that look like if it did something like that in terms of that channel? How does that look? So let's take a look at that and let's look at, um, wait a minute, that's gonna be here. So let's take a look at a parallel channel and let's say if that were the case, how does that line up with our parallel channel theory? And it looks like it may not line up completely with what we've been tracking. But again, that's just a fractal. So just hard to tell where those things would line up. So not quite exact in there, but um, I think you get the picture in terms of this fractal playing out here and what we're looking for and lining up with the FIB levels. This is right in that 618 FIB level. Midline of that parallel channel is right at 50,000. This would put you up around the 55,000 with a 618. Uh, Fibonacci retrace over here. So those are the things that I am looking at today in terms of where price action is going and what it's doing. And again, um, I like to try to keep it simple and just kind of look at the chart, look at the price action, look at the support and resistance levels, look at the number one, you have the cycle that we're in. We're in the bull cycle from 2020 low. And off of that bull cycle, we are now in a range where we've had the downtrend and retrace new all-time high back into a downtrend. That's the range that we're in. Then you wanna look at the trends of those ranges. You're either in an uptrend or in a downtrend. So if you look at those things, find your support and resistance, and it can kind of give you an idea of what you're looking for so that if you're trading, you know where your entries and exits are. And if you're a long-term holder, at least you know what to look for in terms of, do you need to exit when you get back to where, if you bought in recently uh, at higher levels and you wanna, Think about where you're going to exit as price gets back to those areas. You can make that decision. If you bought back in uh, in previous cycle lows uh, after the March 2020 low back in those areas and you're still holding on and you feel like you should have or could have exited in the 60s and you didn't, we get, we're going to get back there and test that at some point. So then you'll have that decision to make again in terms of where it'll go. And the key to that is you never want to be afraid. If you're looking to sell and you want to sell at some point or you need to, you never want to worry about what if you sell too early and price goes up. If you've made a profit, you made a profit, and you will always have a chance to buy back in later uh, with this asset or another asset and make another trade. There's always going to be another trade. The cycle moves and ebbs and flows. If price spikes, it drops. That's the nature of these assets, whether it's stocks, whether it's crypto, doesn't matter what it is. And we didn't really look at the stock markets today. Not a whole lot to look at there. It was just like crypto and Bitcoin down a little bit you know, leveled off at the end of the day. But there's always going to be another trade. There'll always be another day. Never be afraid um, to leave something on the table if you've made a profit. Uh, don't look back and look at price going up after you've sold and say, oh man, I missed it. You don't have to get the exact top. You don't have to get the exact bottom as long as you're making a profit. Uh, and as long as you're happy at the end of the day with the trade, then there'll always be another uh, opportunity to get back in later. So those are the things that I'm seeing. I will see you on the next video. I hope you have a fantastic day.